Hey guys, welcome to Charger Games. This is Raja and this is another Unity 2D racing game tutorial. So this is the video probably a lot of you guys have been waiting for because I have received a lot of emails and messages about this. So in this video, we're going to finally move our car by using the accelerometer in our device. So probably you guys are excited for this. So let's say I have my device in my hand like this. So in this video, we're going to learn how we can, when I move this, when I move like this, our car will move to the left. And when I move like this on the right, our car will move to the right. So this is going to be very, very helpful for you. And before checking this, I would recommend you to check out my Android accelerometer tutorial in my Unity Android game development series and that is going to be very very helpful Okay, I'll probably link that video in the description or probably uh, I'll link it somewhere so that you guys can see it. Okay, so that's gonna be very very helpful So before starting this series, let's take a look at what you're gonna be building in this video. So Here we go Okay, so let's take a look at what you're gonna be building at the end of this video. So let me go ahead and run this scene now I can control my car just by tilting my Android device left and right. Probably, hopefully, you guys can see it. So I can just tilt it left and right, and by using the accelerometer in my device, I can move the car left and right, and this is how we can control the car. So we're gonna build that completely from ground up in this video. So I hope you guys are excited. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the scene. As you can see, currently we have the scene running. So you should definitely have your Unity Remote set up on your device so that when you run the game, it directly run here, okay? So with that being said, let's start coding. So first of all, we're gonna open the car controller script right here. So here's our car controller script. Now from the car controller script, uh, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, as you have seen that in the last video, we have used this touch move function which we were calling each and every frame from the update function so in this video we're gonna create a similar function which will be named as accelerometer move and inside that we will put all our code which are required for the accelerometer input and instead of calling this touch move function we're gonna call that function here okay so instead of touch move we're gonna create a simple new function let's name it void accelerometer move okay so this is our accelerometer move function and now what you're gonna do is inside that we're gonna write all the necessary codes for our accelerometer input and we're gonna call this function from our update each and every frame instead of the touch move function okay so we're gonna go ahead and remove this touch move function from here or we can just comment it out and instead of that, we're going to now call the, not this, accelerometer move function, okay? So this function will be called each and every frame and our accelerometer input will be checked each and every frame, okay? So first thing I'm going to do inside this is this. First of all, I'm going to create a float variable, so float x. And inside that, I'm going to store the value which we'll get by uh, tilting our device from the x-axis. So, let's say I have my device here. I have my device right here. So, if I tilt it like this, then, and tilt it like that, then I will get a negative and a positive value of the x-axis. And I'm going to store that negative or positive value inside this x float variable each and every frame. So that we can check that if the uh, if the device is being tilted in the left or right direction, so that we can move the car in that direction accordingly. Okay. So inside this x variable, I'm gonna store input dot acceleration, not this one, acceleration and dot x. So inside that, we're gonna store the input dot acceleration dot x value. So the x value of the acceleration, uh, which we're gonna get, we're gonna store that inside this x. And if you don't know this, you should definitely check out my Unity Android tutorial on accelerometer. That's gonna be very, very helpful for this, okay? So next we're gonna do, what you're gonna do is, next we need to check for the value of the x. So we need to check if the value of x is negative, then we're gonna move the car to the left direction. And if the value is positive, then you're gonna move the car in the positive direction, okay? 
So in order to do that, just need to write if x is less than zero, then we're gonna do something. Else if x is greater than zero, then we're gonna do something else. So what you can do is if x is less than zero, then we just gonna what are you gonna do? We're just gonna move the car left. So since we have already written code for that in the move left function, so we're just gonna call that function here. So we're gonna call move left function right here. And for this condition, we're gonna call move right function. Okay. Okay. Now before doing all this, I wanna show something more. So before doing all this, let me go ahead and comment this thing so that I can show you something else before doing all this. So I'm going to actually show you that the value of x is being negative when you tilt it left and the value of x is being positive when you tilt it right so that you guys can believe and see it in your own eyes what we are doing. So what you're going to do is I'm going to write debug.log and inside that I'm going to write x equal to and then I'm going to write this plus sign and then I'm going to write the value of x. So what, you are, what we are doing here is, it is the string that we have and this is a float value. So we are converting that float value to the string and concatenating with it with the string and printing the whole thing together. So that each and every frame, it prints the position of the x, I mean the value of the x that we have. Okay. So now, okay, let me wait for it to build. It's building. I don't know why my unit is slow today. So with that being done, first of all, let me go ahead and play this scene. And it's taking so much time for running. I don't know why. Okay, so before testing, uh, we, I should do one thing. Just I need to disable this enemy so that I can show you the actual movement of the car. So let's go ahead and click on this car spawn position to which we have this car spawner script attached and I'm gonna go ahead and disable this so that no enemies come and we can uh, test the car easily and I'm gonna also select this audio manager and I'm gonna disable that so that you don't need to listen to the audio each and every time which is pretty annoying I know so now I have my device here and let me go ahead and play this scene and let me put the window console from here just wait for it to run and let me put the window console here and as you can see currently I have my device straight and you can see that the value is probably near zero and if I move my value left as you can see the value uh, probably you can see it here if I move my device left as you can see the value is negative at this time and if I move my device at this direction you can see the value is positive which is greater than zero so this time it is positive and if I move it here you can see the x value is negative okay now this is what we're gonna take advantage of we're gonna know when the value is negative then we're gonna move the car left and when the value is positive we're gonna move the car right now one more thing I need to uh, show you is that it's pretty hard to make the value proper zero so even if I keep the device completely still here you can see that it's hard to make the value completely zero Okay, so what you're gonna do is instead of calling the function, uh, instead of mm, calling the left and right function when the value is negative or positive, instead of doing that, what you're gonna be doing is we're gonna call that function when the value is a little bit, a little bit above the zero value. Okay, so as an example, let's say we're gonna call the move left function when the value is less than minus 0.1. And we're going to call the move right function when the value is greater than positive 0 0.1. Okay. So as you can see that it's not possible to keep 0 anytime. So our car will never be still. Since always it has a negative or positive value. It has never a, it never gets a 0 value. So it's not possible to keep the car still at a position. So the car will always move. So instead of doing that, we will move the car left when it has a certain value, let's say minus 0 0.1 or less than that 
and we'll move the car right when it has a certain value, let's say plus 0.1 or greater than that. Okay, I hope it became clear. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm trying to say. So let me quickly go ahead and open the script and in the script you can see that we have done this. So let's go ahead and comment, remove this comment. Okay, so now we are calling this move left function which is here. Instead of doing that, what you're going to do is we're going to call this move left function when the value is less than 0.1f. And I'm going to put a minus sign before that since we're going to call this function when the value is less than minus 0.1f. And we're going to call this function when the value is greater than plus 0.1f. Okay, so we're going to call this function whenever the value is positive 0.1f. And else, that means if the value is anything other than that, that means if it's 0 or if it is between 0 and minus 0 0.1 or between 0 and positive 0 0.1, then we're going to call that function which is set velocity to 0. Okay? So when the value of the acceleration is between that, between this level, 0, 0 0.1, 0, minus 0 0.1, plus 0 0.1 when the value is between that at that time we're gonna call this set value to zero function and when it is beyond that let's say it is here beyond that then we're gonna move the car right and when it is beyond this we're gonna move the car left okay I hope it become clear now so since we have this so let's go ahead and run this game now and see what happens before that, I just need to wait to wait for the car to load and let's start. In the meantime, let me go ahead and create the console. So let me put the console right here. As you can see, I have the console here. Let me make it a bit small so that you can see. As you can see, now I have a value minus 0 0.1, which is greater than minus 0 0.1, and now I have Okay, there's something wrong here, I guess. The value is not changing, man. Okay, our car moves correct. As you can see, even if I keep it still, the car doesn't move since we have given it a threshold value above which, if it gets above that, only then it will move. Okay, our value is changing here. Okay. So here we have value. And you can see the original value changing here. If you take a look at here, you can see the value changing. So when we have a value of greater than 0 0.1 may be negative or positive only then it moves to the left and right so as you can see now I can move my device and the car moves like this so this is what we wanted to achieve and we have we have achieved that so this is it so this was pretty easy I think I guess and some things were pretty confusing I tried to explain those things as much good as I can I know I'm not good at explaining things but I try to do as good as I can so hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something if you have any questions just make sure to write those in comments and this is what we wanted to do and you have a game which you can control with accelerometer so a lot of people were actually very keen to do these things so finally now you can do that you can show it to your friends family and everywhere and say that you are a game developer okay so with that being said, thank you very very much for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day. See you in another video and keep learning and stay awesome. Goodbye.